Gers is one of those characters that, when you first encounter them, is sure to piss you off. For one, you have an affinity to Link because you're an avid Zelda player, right? So why wouldn't you by now? Groose just has this really negative energy to him at first that we immediately hate as players. But if Groose wasn't this way in the beginning, his character development and transformation into someone insanely honorable wouldn't be so satisfying, would it? His character arc teaches us very important lessons concerning comparison syndrome, purpose, and the fact that people can change. They aren't just one thing at all times, like society expects and even tries to dictate through tribal reinforcement. Although society at a macro level continues to scare me, I believe that change is possible for anyone. At a micro level, when people aren't just trying to fit in with the masses, I firmly advocate that they have limitless potential and can really make something of themselves if they try. In the beginning of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Gruus is a bully and a rival to Link. Gruus absolutely has feelings for Zelda, and seeing Link's close relationship with her doesn't help the situation. Gruus's arrogance and insecurity even drive him to hide Link's Loftwing, or flying bird that he is expected to compete with in the wing ceremony, a heated Loftwing race, and an ancient tradition in Skyloft, Link's home, that determines who graduates from the Knight Academy. Luckily, Link ends up finding his Loftwing, wins the race, and graduates to move forward and save the world. However, because this is the first interaction players have with Gruus, it makes us really hate him. In a video essay by Captain Bergerson, he makes the point that Groose criticizes Link's work ethic by saying that he floats through life with his head in the clouds. Even Zelda acknowledges that Link puts little effort into his studies. However, we do find from the headmaster, Zelda's father, that he is in fact a student in good standing. Thus, a solid conclusion is that Link is just naturally good at what he does and doesn't have to put much effort into his studies, still passing with flying colors. Groose, on the other hand, is not a natural talent, and this just adds to the comparison syndrome he suffers from. Not only does he feel like he works harder than Link, he is jealous that Link's minuscule efforts lead him to winning Zelda's affection, something he sees as very unfair. Still, this doesn't excuse his bully-like behavior, but I bet that you have felt a similar way about someone at some point in your life. I know I have. Measuring your worth against the accolades of others is a really bad path to go down, but we will dive further into this later. After Zelda is thwarted into the abyss of the surface world, Groose withdraws to his room and isn't seen again until about half Halfway through the game. This is where things start to shift, albeit slowly. Groose starts to become more selfless in nature, sacrificing his desires for the greater good. Groose follows Link to the surface world, and after overcoming his shock that this place does indeed exist, and that Zelda is okay, he tells Link that he'll take it from here, and proceeds to try and take Link's place as the hero of the game. However, we see later on that Impa, or the Old One as Skyward Sword calls her, tells Groose that he is not the chosen hero of the goddesses, which is much to his dismay. Immediately following this, Link defeats the Imprisoned, a huge monster that seeps up from the bellows of the sealed grounds, and we can tell that Groose, who is scared at first, is blown away by Link's heroism. His comparison syndrome is still active, however, and in an attempt to gain one last ounce of sympathy from Link and Impa, he proclaims, I hate even saying this, but I guess you've got it all figured out, Granny. Me? Well, there's nothing I can do to help Zelda. I'm useless. Impa seeing past this wisely replies, Ah, you sell yourself short, my friend. You'll see in time that you have your own role to play in all this. Groose says nothing and walks away, seemingly defeated. Captain Bergerson notes that Groose realizes in these moments that Link isn't just a low-effort Chad, but he is truly qualified to be the hero. Thus, these words are not bashful of Link, they are instead self-critical, and show Groose feels he lacks a purpose. The narrative in Groose's mind shifts, and he comes to terms of acceptance that Link is the hero, not him. Towards the end of the game, we are brought back to the site where Link first fought the Imprisoned. We notice that there are a bunch of rails surrounding this massive area on all floors, and Groose tells us that he built this this new system, and we'll see very soon what it's for. Coin the Grusinator, TM, this massive rail and cart contraption helps Link defeat the Imprisoned once more, as Groose launches huge bombs at the monster to stun it, while Link then attacks it. Concerning his new outlook on protecting the sealed grounds and Impa from the Imprisoned, Groose says to Link, it ain't as action-packed as what you're doing, but maybe this is my destiny. Know what I mean? He also tells Link to say hello for him to the people in Skyloft, and that he is happy. We'll talk a lot more about this 
later in the video, when we discuss purpose. The third battle with the Imprisoned consists of Link and Groose fighting together. However, when access to Groose's bomb stash is restricted, Groose devises a new strategy in the moment, similar to how a speedrunner would solve an open-ended problem. See my previous video with Hate 8 He launches Link onto the beast, and Link slashes its weak point from on top of it. Later on, when Link completes the Triforce and Zelda appears alive and well, it drives Groose to tears of joy. He really is a changed person here. Girahim, the game's main villain, then appears out of nowhere. Groose is scared, but stands up to him. Though he is knocked down easily by Girahim, Groose still follows Link into the past and catches Zelda in a long fall that would have killed her. After the final battle with Girahim and Demise, the game's final boss, Impa gives accolades to Groose, stating that, joke or not, your contributions to our efforts were heroic. You have my thanks. To which Groose replies, just glad I could make myself useful. The once jealous, insecure, and downright rude traits of Groose all change into ones of acceptance, heroism, and honor. It's an incredible transformation that we can all learn from. I now am going to dive further into his character by discussing comparison syndrome, purpose, and being multifaceted as an individual, which deals directly with being able to change for the better. Comparison syndrome is something that should be avoided at all costs. I recently saw a YouTube video from a marketing advice channel called Good Mornings about competitive analysis. The host showed a photo of Michael Phelps swimming in the Olympics. During the race, Phelps' competition was looking at him mid-swim. Phelps, however, was looking straight ahead with his eye on the prize. Guess what? Phelps won the gold, not the other guy. This other swimmer was so distracted looking at his competition that he wasn't focusing on himself or his goals. To be balanced, yes, it is good to see what your competition is doing and to learn from them, but you have to be an individual at the end of the day. Why be a carbon copy of something else when you can be yourself? Similarly, when I was pursuing a career in mainstream EDM, a world run by gatekeepers and sadly, lots and lots of of money, which can corrupt art if care is not taken, I had to tailor the sounds of my tracks to be like everyone else's. There was no room to be unique. I had to make things for labels, not for art's sake. This always frustrated me but I gave in. Along my journey, there were a lot of people that I saw who were doing this better than me. They had also been producing for less time, though. These people were doing gigs regularly, signed to major labels, and had more overall connections in the scene. Some of them were even rude to me when I would reach out to them for mentoring advice, which I found to be uncalled for, but hey, I can't really do anything about that, can I? Now, this doesn't describe everyone. I got to learn and hang out with some of my absolute heroes in the scene, and they were fantastic people. However, at the same time that I was trying to to please the gatekeepers. I was looking at my competition way too much, and it stole my joy. Producing one of my true loves in life became a chore. I was jealous of people who were ahead of me, similar to Groose, because I had been working way harder for way longer, yet I was not as far along as people who had put in less effort over the long term. Boy, this was a stupid mentality. Like, seriously, it got to the point that I was even jealous of my close friends in the scene when something good would happen in their career. So yeah, I'm calling myself stupid here. I'm allowed to do that based on this behavior. Thankfully, I learned. When I pivoted to the video game music scene, it's like my whole world became new. Finally, I was in a scene that embraced me for who I was. I could be as creative as possible, play as many genres as I wanted in a DJ set, and <gasps> I was even allowed to put more than one type of genre in the same song. I found a space in which I could create my own purpose, choose my own path, and be myself. Yet, I had to accept first that I wasn't going to make it in mainstream EDM. Now, when I see people like VGR, James Landino, Ben Briggs, Noteblock, Vector U, or Player2, people who have thousands and thousands of followers and millions of streams, I am no longer jealous of people who are further ahead than me, despite having worked at this for way longer than all of them. Producing, that is, not VGM in general. In fact, when they succeed, I feel a sense of joy and happiness for them that I've never experienced before for my so-called competition. It's like a rising tide lifts all boats, or something. It really helps that all of these people have been extremely professional and friendly, always willing to lend a hand and just be down to earth. Heck, one of the things that thrust me into this world was messaging Vector U on Twitter with a link to my Stickerbush Symphony remix and asking if he wanted to collab. And folks, a person with 20 times my following said, absolutely. Now here we are, performing together at shows like MAGFest and VGMCon. It's crazy what happens when your competition actually just becomes your friends that you want to lift up and support no matter what. Because I have learned over time and experienced things in this manner, 
It's with this energy that I treat people who have fewer numbers than me. If they have the talent, I don't care what their follower count is. I just want to make art with them. Okay. Back to Groose. We see Groose compare himself to Link a lot, but in a way where Groose thinks he is better than Link because he works harder. Just because he was going to do the flying race game sport hoop skit ball better than Link, he thought he should deserve Zelda's affection. Friends, Napoleon Dynamite was not correct when he said, girls only want boyfriends who have great skills. Just because you feel entitled to something based on your own merit doesn't mean you are actually entitled to anything. People are still allowed to say no to you. It might hurt, but the sooner we realize that it's typically not a personal attack, the better. It is probably because of something deeper, like energies not meshing. We should move forward in a calm and collected manner, and realize that it isn't all about us. When Groose changes his demeanor from bully of Link to friend of Link, things really start to happen. Their unification is able to put away the imprisoned, no matter how many times it rises, and together they both play a role in saving Zelda. Friendships and unification with other human beings are key to uplifting our mental health personal development, and overall well-being. If you've seen any of my other videos, I'm constantly saying we can do so much more united than divided, and Groose and Link uniting like this is absolute proof. I do want to point out here, though, that Link being the hero is not cocky about his place in the universe. In my past, when I was jealous of someone better than me, who got what they wanted but I didn't, despite my work ethic, it really bothered me when they had an ego. I've come across more than one person like this in my life, and not only were these people better than me, they knew it. And they made me aware of this as much as possible through bullying me to a certain extent. At one point in Skyward Sword, when Link is about to go through the gate of time and go meet Zelda, he turns around and more or less invites Groose to come with him, as we see in his facial expression. Instead of Link holding a grudge against Groose for being bullied and plowing through the game without Groose's help at all because he knows he is better equipped as the hero of the story, Link treats Groose as an equal and as a teammate who can help to accomplish good in the world. Or to put it in modern terms, instead of seeing that Groose has less followers than Link or that Groose has less social clout than Link and rejecting him, Link sees that Groose has a purpose and is useful to saving Zelda. In doing so, their bond becomes stronger. This, my friends, is where we must be different. It is the responsibility of both parties to unite, not just the lesser party to submit underneath the power of the greater. When we humble ourselves, realize that we all have strengths, and utilize what we're individually good at on a team level, we truly become unstoppable. If you see yourself in either position, act accordingly. Be a friend to your fellow person and discover that what you can accomplish together will be limitless. Purpose is something that we feel absolutely depressed without, but it is ambiguous at times as to what purpose means. Because I identify as male, I think that it is appropriate for me to talk about men's mental health at this point in the video as it relates to Cruz. Note that I am not speaking about this at all to one-up the issues that women deal with, nor am I trying to ignore anyone who is non-binary, trans, of a different race, or any other type of classification that we have created as humans. We all have hardships that we deal with, and they pain me to see in society, as I wish we could all just unite and kick ass. However, I am a straight, white, cis male, and as far as I know, so is Groose. I am egalitarian as shit, but I'm also objective, and I see things happening to men right now that I want to talk about. I want us, men, to be better. So I'm going to talk about this because it is very needed and often ignored. Unfortunately, a lot of men have a knack for exhibiting all the traits that Groose possesses at first. Now, this isn't an attack on alpha males, as it were, so let me be clear about that. I have also exhibited these types of of comparative and jealous traits, as shown above, and I'm the furthest thing from the alpha male stereotype there is. That said, there is a men's mental health crisis going on in the world right now. Men are four times more likely to commit suicide than women, and men, who are typically less in touch with their feelings and more silent about them, avoid seeking out mental health care. With the way the world is moving, lots of men feel as though they lack a purpose in life. This is to the detriment of society, honestly, as people who undergo hardships of this manner have the tendency to do things that are harmful to others. Now, again, just because these things affect men in large numbers doesn't mean that they only affect men. It's 
it's common sense that this goes without saying. Think of me bringing this up like it's a segue. If you are feeling like this, it sucks no matter how you identify. So what does this have to do with Groos? I think Groos's aforementioned jealousy of Link's natural talent, despite his minimal work ethic, along with Groos feeling useless, is the key here. Groos feels as though he lacks a purpose, where Link is the hero of the story. He walks away after saying he is useless, and we don't hear from him again until later. What did he go through during this point and the next time we see him? I am unaware. However, I would like to take the artistic liberty to say that Groose came to terms with who he was and his role in the story. He does say that Impa helped him quit feeling sorry for himself after all. He chose to accept this, and then he chose to create his own purpose based on who he is, not on who he previously compared himself to. When Link enters the sealed grounds for the second time and sees the Grusinator, TM, Groose says, I don't know what came over me. I had no clue I had the talent to make something like this. What a powerful statement. I also had no idea that I had the wherewithal to speak about video games and mental health along with DJing and producing a completely different sound than what I chased for the first 14 years of my music career. Here we are though. I've never been more fulfilled, but it took accepting who I was, my role in my story, and to stop comparing myself to others and instead be an individual. I feel like you probably have something deep inside of you that's just waiting to be shown to the world, and if you can't think of anything right now either, that's okay too. Heck, Colonel Sanders didn't start KFC until he was 62. To do something in the here and now though, you can start your journey by accepting who you are, pivoting and changing things in your life for the better, and always being kind to others. Make it genuine though. People can smell inauthenticity from a mile away. Always be real in your kindness and acceptance of others. That said, I want to talk about something that has been on my mind for a while and I promise I will relate it to Groose. Want to hear an example of something I have been guilty of in the past? I have seen an actor, like Steve Carell, who we all know and love as Michael Scott, play a serious role, and when I behold it, I scoff because Steve Carell is supposed to be the world's best boss, not John DuPont. But why? Why did I have this reaction? Why does society at large conform to this kind of perception? When Lady Gaga goes from a singer to an actress, why isn't she taken as seriously? In the beginning of Skyward Sword, Groose is a straight up douche. I bet you there were some players that weren't okay with his transformation, whether expressed or subconscious, and that's something I really question. Why? Again, Groose himself, after building the Grusinator, TM, says, I don't know what came over me. I had no clue I had the talent to make something like this. Even Groose expected himself to be one-sided when he clearly possessed more within himself. Sometimes it takes going through something in life to make us realize this, and we must fight society's expectations to flourish in all the might and strength we have within us. Think about it though. When you see someone doing something online, especially on platforms like Instagram Reels or TikTok, they become that and only that persona. Take for instance the user Octocon666 on Instagram Reels. This man creates Reels in really broken English in a particular style and captions all of them motivated video. These videos are hilarious and I really enjoy them due to the manner in which he delivers his motivational speeches. Yet imagine if this man all of a sudden started making videos where he, for instance, spoke in perfect English and was talking about the mysteries of life. Society wouldn't have it. He'd become irrelevant overnight. You and I both know that this is true. Sure, there could be exceptions life is gray after all, but people who do things like this typically fall flat on their face. It's the reason why famous YouTubers start new channels. Like, why can't they just keep it all on the same channel? Again, let's have common sense here. If the channel is called How Money Works, a real finance channel in finance YouTube, but there is a video discussing magic tricks instead on the channel, yeah, that's a little misleading. But take, for instance, Andre Jick, a real channel in finance YouTube that does magic tricks as an engagement slash attention span retention tactic. What if he did a random video explaining how to do a certain card trick. Maybe it would be cool, but I guarantee you it would get way less views because society expects one thing and one thing only from him. Better yet, what if Andre decided to do a video about cooking? He'd be ostracized for it, despite his channel just being named Andre Jick instead of something directly related to money. What if Andre is passionate about cooking? Why does society expect only one thing out of a person? I feel like capitalism perpetuates this since everything is about the almighty dollar and because society's attention span is a cold 
collective has grown shorter and shorter, which has created a world in which thinking becomes hard and being spoon-fed from an algorithm becomes the norm. The previous two examples were both pretty trivial, though. What about people who did terrible things in the past, but are now changed humans? When you think of Jordan Belfort, or the Wolf of Wall Street, do you think of a swindler or a motivational speaker? I bet you just think about his financial crimes, yet the man went to prison, changed, and is now a speaker that actually does good in society. People can change. Yeah, we should always use wisdom in scenarios like this, duh. All I'm saying here, though, is become aware of this fact. When you catch yourself thinking like this, ask why. Really, no. Ask why you are having these thoughts, and open your mind to the possibility that not everything is tightly bound in a box of conformity. My main takeaway here is that you should become accepting of the fact that people can change, and when they do, you shouldn't be surprised. If it's for the better, you should encourage it. Heck, my pivot to VGM has allowed me the space to become the very best version of myself as a musician. Specifically, I come from the trance scene in mainstream EDM, and in my past, I remember also scoffing at certain acts who stopped making trance to make other genres instead. This is a very common attitude within different factions in mainstream EDM. As I grew though, I became more accepting of the fact that people's interests change. Acts like Jason Ross, one of my production teachers, started off strong in Anjuna Beats, one of the premier trance labels in the world, but now works with Seven Lions on the Ophelia label, where he is making all sorts of genres. Jason even comes back to trance once in a while, with releases on Anjuna Beats. I respect this variety a lot, and I love that Jason is a fellow producer who is pushing the boundaries of multi-genre DJs. He's a multifaceted individual, and I love him for it. Going back to my previous example of Steve Carell, there's no good reason to write him off as someone who can't do both serious and funny roles. The guy is a talented actor, and we shouldn't expect just one thing out of him. Similarly, the writers of Skyward Sword were brilliant when they transformed Groose's character and made him come around. They were so intelligent when they presented his transformation in the manner they did, because Groose is a multifaceted individual that just needed to go through a journey, realize his strengths, and discover multiple skills he didn't know he had within himself all along. I would even argue that we are similar to Groose, and these positive parts of us are inside us all along. Heck, I'll even bet that Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, had good in himself all along too. We just need the proper circumstances and mindset to manifest these positive aspects of ourselves. My friends, people can change. Sometimes they just need the space to work on themselves. In addition, like how the Norwegian prison system rehabilitates its inmates to rejoin society, people need to receive some enablement from society to foster positive change. Now, here's one last story from my personal life to tie all this together. I made friends with a man named Chris when I lived in Kentucky in a really strange way, and they ended up becoming one of my closest friends. In fact, we still are to this day. I was eating at a restaurant patio with my wife, and I saw this individual standing a few feet away. He was on his cell phone, just answering texts. He had on some really cool jeans, so in my nice Midwest fashion, I told him that I really liked his jeans, and I asked him where he got them. His expression was cold, and he didn't answer me. In fact, in walking away, my wife saw him flick me off. I immediately felt unsafe by this interaction because America and guns! So we started to try and finish our dinner to leave. Before we could get anywhere though, Chris came up to me and said, hey, I owe you an apology. What I did was really uncalled for. I was blown away by this instantaneous change and even impressed enough to start a conversation with him. He told me where he was coming from. People in Kentucky aren't like you, just trying to be nice. I thought you were making fun of me. Something shifted though in those moments after he walked away and he realized that I wasn't. Well, we both found out in that conversation that we loved fashion and that we were both DJs, so we exchanged information and we began to hang out. As I got to know Chris more and more, he told me about his past and about how he used to be a terrible person. We also discovered that we vibe like no other, down to our insane sense of humor. Chris is an amazing example of someone who has gone through things in his life, changed who he is, or I would like to argue that he brought out the good he always had within himself out, and is now doing good in the world. It is amazing how I went from feeling unsafe to becoming incredible friends with Chris. Instead of leaving the patio that day because I felt unsafe and offended, I accepted his apology immediately, and the synergy that resulted is something that I'm forever grateful for. Heck, Chris and his girlfriend even attended my wedding, and if you've heard my trainer battle theme remix from Pokemon, I made that for Chris. That's how good of friends we became. My point is to be open to the possibility of this happening within yourself and within others. If it is happening to someone you know and love, encourage them along their journey. If you see it happening to someone that you previously had disagreements with, keep an open mind 
mind that they could actually be trying to change for the better, because who knows, they might even help you accomplish your goals along the way. When we work together in unity, like Bruce and Link did, to save Zelda and take down evil, anything is possible. Remember that. <laughs>now for the YouTube crap. If you like this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up so that the algorithm will hate me slightly less as each day passes. Seriously, I, I really want to get these videos out there and I really hope they at least help someone cope with the circumstances of life and to become a better person. Unity always is greater than division, as Gruus and Link demonstrated, and when we unite, anything is possible. If you like the music playing in the background, just know that I release a new Club Ready video game remix every other week on Theology Thursday. So please hit the bell so you become aware of all the videos that I upload. In addition, I do a monthly broadcast called In VGM We Trust on Twitch, the second or third Monday of every month, where I showcase the latest and greatest in video game remixes. That video always gets uploaded on my channel on the first of the following month. Lastly, I release videos like the one you just watched every other month, and on the other months, I release a mental health podcast called The Quest Within. For my next video in this series, I honestly don't know what I'm going to talk about yet, but it'll come to me. I take every Every May off is a sabbatical month to recharge and get ahead on my content and music release schedule. So the next one of these will come out in June. I'm playing both Final Fantasy 16 and Kingdom Hearts 3 right now, so it could come from either one of those. Or not, I'm still deciding. Stay tuned, and as always, take care of each other. I'll see you in the next one.